once again will enjoy some great onboard looks from Ross Hook. Big thumbs up there. He's ready for the start. He gives us some great off-the-line shots as well as race action. Tell us about stock trucker. Mostly stock, full-size, two-wheel drive, production pickup trucks, engine type, max 370 cubic inch with a stock stroke, mandatory restrictor plate with a minimum weight of 4,150 pounds. Take a look at our starting lineup, and we have 11 trucks here. The top 10 will be inverted based on points. That puts Keith Steele way to the outside. Bill Bunnell will actually be outside of him uh, due to the uh, fact he hasn't run all the races prior to this one so he gets stuck outside a little bit but still steel climbing that group they have their work cut out for them but again not quite the numbers of the buggies makes it a little bit more serene heading down to that first turn well you heard the cheering there to get with it as we are green and we are underway bring it in 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 hold there hold there hold there boy steel getting in a lot of input from the spotters and he was able to do a little bit with it, but not a lot. He's about second to last. He's got a lot of work come out for him, but Rod Wells in the lead with Hook in second place. Boy, Wells has been a force in the last couple of rounds, particularly in the early going. He benefited from the inversion, but now look at Hook. Hook had a great start. Oh, just slams into the back of Wells. Wells gets him loose and maybe poetic justice to Hook because Hook loosened him up, and when Wells came around, he knocked Hook right back off the track. Turnabout is literally a fair play. Yeah, well, I, I don't think I could, couldn't have worded it any better myself, but Lutzo out in front now, but that was a tough break, but Hook was pushing on it pretty hard. He should have let off a little bit earlier, but, you know, I think it was justice. Man, big moment there. Climbing gets knocked sideways, and he's off track. He's going to lose some ground as he regains again right in front of Steele. Well, there you go. The guys running one, two in the points are back at the points, running very close. But take a look at what happened here. This was that moment. You see Hook on the inside. He thinks he's got a clean run. Then he gets into Wells. Also, Wells gets a little sideways. Now comes back around. Can't adjust quick enough. And then, boom, they connect. And the next thing you know, Hook's doing a 360 and trying to get rolling again. But it didn't hurt Wells that bad. He lost a couple spots, but not near as bad as Hook. Well, at that point, you're absolutely right. But Hook now is up to fifth. And while we were in the replay, scoring shows now that he's gone around Wells, so it's possible that Wells actually did hurt something on the truck as he's dropped down in a big hurry here. During that whole exchange, Lutzo is the guy who went right to the front. Lutzo's been very clean out front. He's been fast over and over again in that rappel forward, but um, always seems to have a problem. And then today has been one of those days. Oh, and Hook goes up and undersides his truck. Unbelievable. He gets up and just completely sli slides on one side, which rarely happens. And usually, if you get over like that, you're end over end. And Lutzo has gone inverted as well. So, and that obviously were two very independent incidents. So that promotes Don Williams into the lead with Rhonda Conitzer in the second spot here. So Williams once again finds himself in a great position here. And keep in mind that uh, he won the most recent round, round seven here at Park River. Looking good here again. Yeah, he's got some strong trucks that are just, you know, uh, faded or flipped out of this race. So Williams in a great spot once again. Looking very good with Conitzer in second. She's having a great run as well, but Williams, that Jasper engine's tranny, uh, and tranny Ford looking pretty tough, and Hook still in trouble. He's he obviously ended up eventually on all four, but that's, you said earlier in one of the shows that a vehicle looked like a marble bag. That looks more like a punching bag. That thing is absolutely beat. Yeah, it's been beat on one side and then the other. It looks like Hook got sideways, went on went on his left side, then once they got him going again, something he might, maybe he didn't have any vision, but he went straight off the track after that. So here we'll take another look at that. As he comes down into this corner, comes in, gets on the bicycle, and up on his, on the side. But then see it stays sliding on the side and it keeps him down there. But he did end up going back on his wheels. Now he's trying to get it fired again. Now, now watch this. This is the one where he went literally off track. Gets on the bicycle and he has to save it, has to save it. Whoop, down into the trees. Tough day for Ross Hook, man. When it rains, it pours. Well, and guess what? When he had that excursion off track, he ran right over one of our camera cables. So we've lost the camera now as a result. So Ross Hook having all kinds of effects on this race. <laughs> on and off the TV screen. That's right. Now there's Edgerton. Now he's running in the four spot, and Steele has fought his way up into the top five. So Steele coming back once again, and now he's got to get around Edgerton. And Edgerton just pointed a bye. Thanks, like job, buddy. You're clear. You're clear. You're clear. Go get him. Now he's getting by. Steele's starting this race very, very slow, but he's getting faster and faster as the race progresses. 
But up front, it's Don Williams once again with a great run here at Barton River and Stock Truck in the Lucas Oil Sportsman Series. Eighth round of the Cora Lucas Oil Sportsman Series. We are in Stock Truck, and there is your leader, number 877. Don Williams having himself another strong day. Now, a bit of an update. During the break, number 42, Kleiman got by Conitzer for second and with Steele back at the pack. Kleiman came in only one point behind Steele. So this pass we're about to replay for you, Ricky, has huge points implications. You see Kleiman getting a run from the outside, squares up Conitzer, he gets a run up the hill. Very, very clean pass, and Kleiman back on top of his game. Boy, it looks like it. That was a beautiful move he set up to perfection. Now, Williams continues to lead out front here, picks up the white flag, one to go for Williams. This is a battle now for third, that's Conitzer with Steele right behind Ronda at this stage, and Steele well aware, I'm sure, at this point of what's going on in terms of the points up front with Kleiman running in second, and he's in fourth, and that's enough of a swing to, at this point, give Kleiman the points lead. Boy, Conitzer very loose, same spot. Same spot, and we see what started that was uh, Ronda got up on the bicycle, coming through that after the finish line corner, he got up on two wheels and went to correct and it got loose. And now, same spot, same result, but here's Steele on the outside getting really, really loose, but he has to make one more shot at uh, Ronda Conitzer to go for that third spot. Yeah, he ran a little bit too wide there, and it almost bit him, and he had to get out of it. Now they're in a yellow flag zone. See the flag, so no passing right here. That's because Wells is being towed off the track, so there's no passing. He's got to slow down, and that is really going to help Conitzer here. But yeah. Steele steel let, let off. Um, I, I always went with the, the train of thought, I'm going to stay glued to my competition through a yellow. I'm not going to pass him or touch him, but I'm going to stay right on their bumper, and he let Ronda get away. He might not have a chance to get it back. That's a very good point. Meanwhile, here's Williams, and he's leading, but he is slowing down. That is nowhere near on the pace he was running earlier. Does he have a right front tire that's gone down? Something, yes, he does, and there goes Kleiman into the lead. Boy, Kleiman, this is exactly what he needed in terms of the points. Unbelievable for Don Williams. He's been so strong in the last round and went leading almost every lap and then coming down to two corners to go losing a front wheel like that that's got to break your heart absolutely he's been so tough since they got to bark river here he's shaking off all those gremlins but Lyman very gratefully takes a big big win here which has big implications on the points especially depending upon if williams can hang on for second at this stage but the only thing we know for sure is that Kleiman has won, and that is, as we said, a fourth win of the season and a great drive. Here we go, and Williams didn't, but Conitzer was the one who snuck around and picked up second. Williams' is third, Steele could do no better than fourth, Zamonic fifth, and Hook Wells, Edgerton, Bunnell, and Lutzow. That's the results in stock truck here at the Lucas Oil Sportsman Series in Bark River. That means it's time to head down to Victory Circle. Ken Stout is with our winner. Boy, an excellent job. Your career wins go to 18, and it was a battle, I mean, right up to the very end. Yeah, we got off the start there. The truck kind of just went flat for a half a second. I don't know why, but, you know, I kept the leader in sight all the time, and I was just praying that I'd get my chance to catch back up to him. Any particular corner that you really like here? All of them. They're all great corners. I mean, the truck handles so well. I mean, I, I just can't believe that uh, it, it, it works as good as it does. Um, I'd like to thank Davey Vandermiss and my... my Chief engineer on the truck. He's done a fantastic job. Spent hundreds of hours on that truck. Great man. Um, BF Goodrich tires, Stripe FX custom graphics, American Racing Wheel, AMS Oil, um, Bill Stein shocks. All those guys are really good. You know, and MSD Ignition, Mastercraft, Mechanics Wear. Um, all the guys. We couldn't do it without them. I just can't thank them enough. Mark is now tied with Evan Evans as the winningest drivers here at Bark River in core history. Oh, and by the way, his truck will pull double duty today. Ah, very good point. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's first take a look at the points. After 8 or 12 rounds in the uh, Core Lucas Oil Sportsman Series in stock truck, there's Kleiman up by 7 over Steele. That was a big, big swing and very important for Kleiman. And Steele has to be a bit crushed here. Here's 6 through 10. And those are the points in stock truck. We're about ready to fire it up for Sportsman 2. We'll go on board with Mike Overt. Don't go anywhere. 
eighth round of the Cora Lucas Oil Sportsman Series in Bark River, Michigan, part of the Boss Snowplow Challenge. It is Sportsman 2 coming up, and we heard Ken Stout allude to the fact that Kleiman's truck is going to be doing some double duty. What's up? Dan Badeau, due to motor trouble, will not run his normal Sportsman 2. And Mark Kleiman is letting him run the stock truck in this Sportsman 2 race. Now, there's no way that Dan's going to be able to go out and race for the win, so he's going out for points. Pure and simple, we're on board with Mike Oberg as we're going to get these great onboard shots. Tell us a little bit about Sportsman 2, Rick. Full-size, two-wheel drive production pickup trucks, weight requirement minimum, 3,650 pounds. Now, if they want to run big motor, they have to put 10 pounds per cubic inch every time they go over. There's a look at your points leader, Mr. Bradley. Let's take a look at our Dynamax Sportsman 2 starting grid. Here's Mike Savage. He'll be closest to the inside. Janice, Juan de Siga, Badeau will be the first four to line up, then Oberg, and then points leader, Tommy Bradley. And Badeau is going to be interesting to watch here, as you said, in points mode. Here's the green. We're away. Bradley once again getting a nice start from the outside and just straight lines it. Juan de Siga got into it with Savage. And both of them are going to be able to be okay and get through there, but Bradley comes out already with a good lead. Yeah, Bradley with a very, very clean start. Savage didn't want to see it, like you said, bump wheels, but it looks like no problem with either of those drivers, no flat tires, so they're, they're able to run. But as you can see, everybody's been running on this course. It's very, very dry. No matter how hard they try to keep water down on it, it still gets looser and looser with the sunshine. Looser and dustier, and as a result, visibility of just, it's still bad, just of a different variety as opposed to that thick mud. Now it's just a blinding dust storm, essentially. And, oh, big move there as Oberg moves up. Got by Janice, so Oberg, who didn't have a great start in the Dynamax truck, now starting to light the fuse a little bit. Yeah, Oberg's starting to get on the gas and run pretty hard. Like I said before, those Kubo tires have done a really good job with all the years of research that BF Goodrich in, in Goodyear has put into building off-road tires. For Kubo to come in in just two years and run this strong, they've done a great job with research. Yeah, that's very impressive indeed, and here you go. A look, and there's that dust we're talking about. Sometimes like that, just maybe more a little annoying than anything else. Did over just, uh, it's just our onboard is losing some of the audio. The minute I thought maybe the engine went dead stick. Here's the replay from the onboard start. You take a look, at this point, everything is great. All of a sudden you'll see this every, everywhere around him start to come in on him. Here you see complete blinded. And that's exactly what Oberg sees as he's going around. He can't see if he's off the track or on the track and you're driving completely by braille. A lot of times you're bumping into other drivers, getting the tires on the side of the track, but you're just trying to keep yourself in the mix because if you lose two spots on that start, it, a lot of times it takes way too much time to gain, to gain that time back for the leaders. Watching Mike Savage running in second, the Savage Construction Ford F-150 uh, Signature Salon, a big sponsor on that truck as well. Well, helping him run, and he's having a good run right now, hanging on to second. Juan de Siga sits in third. The Island Ranch, or excuse me, the Island Resort and Casino Chevy. Also a little help from Bob's Homes, and he's having a good run in third. And they're way back in the order right now. There is uh, Janice, and then, of course, Badol running that stock truck. Well, that just shows you how much faster these Sportsman 2 are than the stock truck. These things have major horsepower, a lot of suspension travel, so they don't have to slow down for the jumps like the stock trucks do, and they got a lot of horsepower. And that's why Janice was back with, with Badeau, because he's got overheating problems, and now he's off the side of the track. Yeah, big problems. He's pulled off and parked it, and you can see a lot of steam and smoke emanating from underneath that hood. So Badeau, by virtue of a little bit of attrition, finds himself in fifth, just trying to stay close, somewhat close in terms of the points championship here. Nice of Mr. Kleiman to let Badeau go out and run this. By that move, by Janice pulling off the track and Badeau is still out there, and Badeau stopped the race right now, he'd make more points towards that championship as, as if he would have not competed. So it was a very good move. Here's the battle for second, and Wanda Seeger was trying to go after him. But look at Oberg. Oberg was watching what was going on, and when Wanda Seeger ran wide, straddled that bank, the embankment a little bit on the outside, that berm, Oberg said thank you and went right underneath, picked up third. Savvy move by Oberg, who was flying. Oberg is really hard on the gas right now, and he's got to go after the championship, so he can't let Bradley just run out there all by himself. So he's all over Savage right now, and he's got to make his move quick because you don't want to sit back in the roost because all it does is tear up your truck. You can, you can buy a rocket thrown up. You can bust a ball joint, tear up a tie rod. A lot of things can happen. Without a doubt, right now, Oberg is on it. 
going after Savage right now. One second. Savage is very loose all over the track. Looks like uh, Oberg is going to make a run for the outside, possibly run all the way around the sweeper. He's got about 10 miles an hour on it, but now cuts to the inside, see if he can make this pass stick. <laughs> What a nice move, just a little bit of a tap, and then that itself the injury buries Savage. I mean, buries him. Take that. <laughs> and that slowed up Savage so much, it just messed up his momentum huge and wanted to see it. Got around Savage as well, and I would guess that Savage has about uh, 50 pounds of dirt on his lap right now. So Bradley leads it, Sportsman 2, with the Soil Sportsman action here at Park River. Back at Bart River, big development here. That is Ben Juan de Siga. He was running as high as third. Now he's in the pits. Yeah, whenever you can see the, the wheel is stuck on there. When you run around with the flat, a lot of times you wedge everything on there and it's almost impossible to get it off. He's got so much dirt and everything packed in there. You saw all the dirt fall out. So it's really a hard part for the crew to get that wheel off to change it. Meanwhile, this must seem kind of familiar to Tommy Bradley because you look at spots on this track right now, it almost looks like you're racing on a dry desert lake bed. It is so baked out there right now. And of course, Bradley out of Vegas, done a lot of desert running and he is at home right now and he is gone. Yeah, he's been very, very comfortable in this truck for quite a few years. And also here at Park River, he's been very fast in every track, track he goes to. But with that whole shot, with him out front, he's just been dominant. Yeah, game, set, match, really, unless he breaks, he owns it right now. A huge, huge lead at this stage. I mean, he can really soft pedal things a little bit right now and make sure he keeps that truck healthy. There's the margin to Oberg, who has been, uh, I think, possibly the fastest guy on the track, climbing up into the second spot. And uh, he has made up some ground on Bradley. Look at the air he carries over the Rancho Jump. Oberg is literally flying right now. He's giving it everything he has. And it, it was great uh, when we saw before last year that Oberg was in a similar situation. He didn't have the big sponsor, and now he's got Dynamax on board. He's got these different things, and that's what Tommy Bradley's looking for, a sponsor that'll stand behind him, support him, and he'll go out there and put that truck on the camera and on the TV in front of all these people and win races. So if you're looking for a good racer, this is your man. Well, I mean, that's just history, isn't it? He has proven time and again that he is capable of it, and he's coming up here. He's got one corner to add another win to what is not only an amazing career, but check out this stat. Talk about a dominant season. He just got his fifth win of the year. He backpedals off, and over it comes through with a very impressive second place. And you got to give Oberg a lot of credit, as you pointed out, uh, coming from back of the pack. Here's the result of Sportsman 2 after the eighth round of the Lucas Oil Sportsman Series. Savage is third, but dull in that stock truck. is fourth. Good useful points. Wanda Sega and Jason Janis rounds out the top six. So Tommy Bradley is on a roll, and that means he is down in winter circle with Ken Stout. Ken? Career totals go to 18. Your fifth win this season. Boy, you are on a roll, my man. Yeah. Um, you know, I, all the tough customers weren't out there today. You know, Dan Bedeau had to borrow another truck because something happened to his, his other one in practice this morning. But uh, I think it would have been a little better race if he'd have been out there. But uh, that's the way it goes. We'll take him however we can get him. You really did an excellent job. Another great start, flag to flag finish. Yeah, you know, it's uh, all about that start at this track. You know, this track seems to get down to one lane because of all the loose uh, dirt pushes it to the outside. And when you try to pull out the pass, of course, I didn't have to do that, but you just don't get any traction. So it kind of narrows everything down to one lane. The start's very important is what I was getting at. And uh, these Goodyear tires, they are the best. Rumor has it you might have a sponsor working. Well, you know, there's a lot of talk this weekend. You just can't come to a racetrack and win a couple races and then uh, not have people looking at you, I guess. But, uh, you know, there's always been a lot of talk, so uh, maybe something will materialize this time. Good job, man. Thank you very much. Boy, you got to hope so. This guy earns it. It's just amazing. Let's take a look at our points after 8 or 12 rounds. Lucas Oil Sportsman Series action and Sportsman 2. Bradley up now by 34 over Ober, who had a great drive. And Bedeau back there in third and falling off a little bit more, although at least he got some points here today. Here's the rest of the top 10 in our Sportsman 2 points at this stage of the championship. Time now, Ricky, for a look at our Skyjacker suspension shock of the race. It was a biggie. It comes with Ross Hook. Comes in, racing with Jerry Edgerton. Gets on the bike 
bicycle and around he goes, but back on his wheels and keeps going. But that is definitely a shock, the shock of the race. Taking another look at it, Hook comes down here. He's running in hard on Edgerton as he comes in, starts to flick the truck sideways, jumps on the bicycle real quick, does a little axle grind on the side, and back on his wheels. It was a shock of the race, and of course, not that much later, he got it up again and right off the track. So it was a big day for him. Let's take a look at our precision gear driver of the year standings. After eight of 12 rounds, incorporates all of the classes in the sportsman division. And Schwal will be up by 19 over Seafeld as we take a look now at the rest of the top 10 in our precision gear driver of the year standings. Now, take a look at our Kubo Tires rookie of the year standings. After eight of 14 rounds, Rod Wells now up by eight over Shu. Then another three back to Rao, then Rogers, and then Joel Schmidt rounds out the top five. Well, Ricky, we have now completed three straight rounds here at Park River. We've got a couple more coming up from this facility, and uh, every race has given us something different. Always something different. And I keep saying it, the track's going to get rougher and deeper, but it keeps getting worse and worse, but in a way that's more technical. Maybe it slows it down a little bit, a little more challenging for the driver, but always great for the spectator. Always something for somebody to be dealing with here at Park River, and we're happy to be back for a couple of more rounds. We'll see you next time from right here. Until then, take care.